Hi, my name is Chris Bullock. I'm the owner of The Wandering Bull. Visit us online, wanderingbull.com, or follow us on Facebook. What we're going to talk about today is edge beating. We frequently get phone calls here at the shop in regards to edge beating. Tribes from the East Coast all the way to the Midwest all use a very similar technique on edge beating. It's a little decorative. It finishes off pieces, but it also will hold two pieces of, you know, if you're beating a bag, um, it will hold those two pieces together. We're starting with thread, needle, and I'm using large 5-0 pony beads. I wouldn't normally use beads this size. We're gonna start with three beads. So I have three beads on my needle. I have a piece of leather that basically we're gonna open it up, slide my three beads down, I'm going to go through both pieces and here's my bead and my beads are on this side my needle has come out on the opposite side I am going to go through the third bead that I put on pull that guy tight what it does is makes the second bead stand up so now I have three beads. I'm only going to apply two more beads in the next stitch. And I've chosen the white um, deerskin with the red beads to really emphasize what we're doing. Slide those two beads down. I'm going to stick my needle into the leather. But placement is important. So I have this one bead. I am going to move over right next to it about an eighth of an inch away. Go through both pieces of fabric. Pull that guy tight. So my beads end up on this side. My thread comes out the opposite side. I'm gonna take my needle and go through the second bead. And pull that guy tight. And as you can see, this bead stands up. So we'll do it again. I'm gonna apply two beads. Go through my fabric, pull it tight, and then take the needle and go through just the one bead. Makes a nice edge. So now we'll do a little different. We're going to add three beads at this point, where I've only had two for the second two stitches. Do the same thing. Gonna go through that third bead. Now you can see I have two beads standing up. We'll do that again. So I'm gonna apply three more beads. Go through my fabric. And once again, I have the three beads. So you can keep adding beads. So if we do one with four. And for the most part, you probably do not want to do four. Um, I think the tendency is for them to break off would be greater the more you apply. And you don't want to do it to cover more area faster. You just want to do it to make your design, your edge, fancier. So there's one with four beads. So it has three standing up, and that one that went down, we'll go right back to the two, just to show you the difference. There's no right, there's no wrong way. Once again, go through your fabric, pull it tight, and once again, through the last bead that you applied, and it makes that bead stand right up. I have examples here on the table, and we'll show you one with only one bead. So I came out of this last bead. I'm going to slide one bead on, go through my material, pull it tight, and just go up through that one bead. Pull it tight. Do it again. Go through my material, pull that tight, and just up through the one bead. So there's multiple versions of edge beating. 
and that single bead technique, notice there's not a bead standing in the upright position. Very similar to the technique that was applied on this crow um, tab for a tomahawk, that bead is only one bead, not a bead standing up. If we look right next door to this example here, this is the Southern Plains in Omaha, Oklahoma, Ponker style um, dance apron. And note, they have the two beads standing up. So this is from the Southwest. These guys are from the Northern Plains. And let's look at this little puzzle pouch. This is probably Tuscarora due to the clear beads, the use of mostly clear beads opposed to all the nice shiny um, variety of colors. And they too have used that um, two bead technique. But on the cover, note they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beads. They have applied across the top, very tiny beads. This piece here is probably 1880s, 1890s. Tuscarora people move from the south. They are now part of the Iroquois Confederacy. We can switch over to this turban. This was my dad's turban, and we has brooches applied with ribbon, but also edge beaded right along that metal um, metal trim all the way to the back. And this is a turban. Men would wear the turban. I have seen some Southern Plains women wearing a similar turban. And on this version of a Gustave, once again, using very large 8-0 pony beads um, for that edge beading to make them stand up. This was my dad friend, Don Brennan. He has since passed and uh, I have the honor of his headdress. So once again, edge beading, multiple tribes used a similar technique. Very easy to do. There's no right or wrong way. Good luck beading and uh, have fun and just play with that technique a little bit and you'll, you'll be satisfied. Once again, Chris Bullock, Wandering Bull. You can jump on the website, look at Facebook. Thanks a lot.